Okay, I'm recording this video immediately after the landing at Brighton Beach because as soon as I finished recording and got up and got a drink of water and was still had the still had the experience fresh in my mind, it really occurred to me that a lot of the cost of that landing was done uh, came from that hard breaking that I did from from falling from 20 some kilometers. And I mean, of course. I mean, it obviously makes perfect sense. The reason that I was thinking that it might not save any fuel to, uh, you know, burn it, burn down and come in lower at the periapsis, because I was thinking you'd hover a lot longer, and if you hover longer, you're going to burn just as much fuel as you would if you just drop fast. But I think if you time it just right, then you can break over top of Brighton Beach and then only have to fall two kilometers with a not so much hover. So I just want to find out. I'm pretty certain that that would be the case. So let's bring let's bring burn time calculator back up on this side. And I guess we should go ahead and include The amount of RCS that we have left just so we, that we have the same number that we had last time or we have close to the same number that we had last time. Just bearing in mind that as we use RCS this number doesn't count down but that's how I had it set up before so I think I should keep it set the same way. Okay so now what I'm going to do is just fast forward time until I'm at the halfway point and then I'm going to burn to the point where my altitude on the other side comes down. So let's bring up orbit on this side. Rotation. And we need to be in the retrograde position. Okay, so now I'm just going to keep fast forwarding time until this number ceases counting up and starts counting down. And I guess I can bring up these MFDs, that way you can see it better in the playback. Okay, I overshot there a little bit, but Translation. it'll be okay. So we're going to go retrograde. Translation. And we're just going to bring periapsis down to 2,500 or 2.5 kilometers. Rotation. Right about there. Okay. Now we used a little bit of fuel here that we did not use before, but it was very little. It looked like it was about uh, 5 meters per second because we had 3011 before now we have 3006 so it's about 5 meters per second but what we got to keep in mind is that once we get to the point where we do the breaking burn now we are going to fall uh, we we are we're going to hit the moon a lot quicker so we need to engage hover engines much sooner just to offset the the fall. I'm not worried if I necessarily get this landing right or if I crash into the moon or whatever. I just want to see kind of a proof of concept here. Okay, I do need to have this view up. And let me just open the landing gear now or lower the landing gear now so I don't have to think about it. Get in a little closer. Five thousand. Four thousand. Okay, you can hear our altitude coming down. Now let's make sure that we have descent hold available. We do. And 
Let's put in the uh, number here, 1682. It's a little bit higher this time because since we're since we're lower, closer to the moon, we're traveling a little faster. So we need to start the burn just a little bit sooner this time. Okay, let's get rotated. Rotation. So when we get to 61 kilometers, we're going to start the braking burn to bring our horizontal speed down to zero. And roughly around that time, we're going to need to engage the autopilot because we're going to fall pretty, pretty fast. Translation. We can probably start the braking burn and wait until our vertical speed starts to climb before we start the hover engines. That way it will save a little bit of fuel. We can't wait very long. Okay, so we're just waiting until we get to 61 kilometers. Let me fast forward time just a little bit. It's good enough. Okay, we're going to start the burn in just a few, couple more seconds. 3,000. And burning. And I'll wait as long as I can to engage the hover descent. Okay, I don't really feel like I can wait much longer. Okay, so now we just wait till our horizontal speed is zero. We'll see if doing it this way saves an appreciable amount of fuel. Moving toward the base. So now let's rotate so the base is in front of me. It's just easier for me to think about which direction to rotate and yaw and translate if it's in front of me. Okay, now we're going to add in a little bit of main. So we can move toward the pad faster. The faster we get over there, the less time we spend hovering. Okay, we'll go with that number. And it looks like this is definitely saving us fuel.
they were 300 meters. Oops, let me switch. Ah. Well, that's definitely a waste of fuel. I forgot to switch to the landing pad this time. But it should be okay, we're not too far out. Yeah, I can tell this is definitely saving fuel. We're going to be at least 300 meters per second cheaper by doing it this way. And there's wheel stop, 0.06 from the center of the pad, not bad. And we're at 844 this time, so actually I guess it's not 300 meters, it's more like 200, but that's still, you know, that's still something to, uh, to note. And it would have been even better if I hadn't made the mistake of not switching over to the correct, to the correct navigation. Okay, so that, that gives us a new benchmark. We can say, I'm thinking 400 to 800, depending on, your, depending on your landing. And of course, it could be way, way more than that if you do one of those landings where, you know, you come in and you, you do a little bit of braking and then you hover and you just take a really long time to get over to the pad. So these numbers here that I'm coming up with of, you know, four to 800 dV to land on the pad is assuming that you're doing a, you know, a quick landing without wasting a lot of time hovering so anyway I just wanted to give that a try real quick just to see what the difference would be if we go back to that original figure of 1334 and we subtract out not that number because I need to update the external first And we subtract out 425. So we, we're saying it cost. Wait, let me think about that for a second. Okay, that's why it doesn't make sense. I've got the wrong number in here in the external fuel mass. 694, there we go, that's better. So 1334 minus 827, 412. So we're saying this one cost us about 506 meters 
per second worth of delta V, whereas the last one was closer to 700. So yeah, about a 200 dV savings. And again, it would have been even better if I had not messed up the uh, navigation, but it probably wouldn't have made a huge difference. So maybe 400 delta V on the low side and 800 or higher just depending on how, how much time you spend hovering and how inefficient your landing is. So that just gives us an idea. Okay, that's going to be it for this video. That's all I wanted to find out. So I will see you in the next part. Um, but that's how I had it set up before, so I think I should keep it set the same way. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just fast forward time until I'm at the halfway point. And then I'm going to burn to the point where my altitude on the other side comes down. So let's bring up orbit on this side. Rotation. And we need to be in the retrograde position. Okay, so now I'm just going to... It might not save any fuel to, uh, you know, burn it burn down and come in lower the periapsis because I was thinking you'd hover a lot longer and if you hover longer you're going to burn just as much fuel as you would if you just drop fast but I think if you time it just right then you can break over top of Brighton Beach and then only have to fall two kilometers with a not so much hover so I just want to find out I'm Okay, I'm recording this video immediately after the landing at Brighton Beach because as soon as I finished recording and got up and got a drink of water and was still had the still had the experience fresh in my mind, it really occurred to me that a lot of the cost of that landing was done uh, came from that hard breaking that I did from from falling from 20 some kilometers. And, I mean, of course. I mean, it obviously makes perfect sense. The reason that I was thinking that keep fast-forwarding time until this number ceases counting up and starts counting down. And I guess I can bring up these MFDs, that way you can see it better in the playback. Okay, I overshot there a little bit, but Translation. it'll be okay. So we're going to go retrograde. He's certain that that would be the case. So let's bring... Let's bring burn time calculator back up on this side. And... I guess we should go ahead and include... the amount of RCS that we have left just so we, that we have the same number that we had last time or we have close to the same number that we had last time. Just bearing in mind that as we use RCS this number doesn't count down